Dr. Johnson, what is the black church? Is there such a thing as a black church? What is black church, Dr. Johnson? What is a black church? Uh, well, I think it's a couple of ways um, we need. I'm going to ask everyone else if you'll mute your mics uh, while he's speaking, please. There, there's a couple of ways that we might look at that, right? Or we need to look at that. There's several different ways. Uh, the two main ways, though, I think we need to look at it is one is a descriptive sense and one is a normative sense. And by that, I mean, when we talk about descriptively the black church, we're talking about the concrete historical assembling of uh, Christian believers. Um, we're talking about the different denominations and we're talking about uh, the different congregations. And then there's this notion of the black church out there as a normative institution. In other words, an ideal construct of what the black church should be. And often we confuse our normative notion, what the black church should be, what the black church is in our mythic imagination with what the black church is and has been. The black church that we're striving to be as theologically defined by some of our best minds versus what the black church is. And so we need to keep those two things distinct because often we collapse those two things and it leads to a lot of unnecessary confusion. So um, I look at the, the, the black church as the assembling of, of, of black Christians in America. Now, at a descriptive sense, in terms of what the black church actually is, there, there is a great deal of overlap, right? We all share a common experience of marginalization uh, in America. We share a common African heritage that has impacted, influenced, and shaped the way we have experienced and processed the Christian faith along with the marginal circumstances under which we processed the Christian faith and then reproduced it in ways that met our spiritual needs. And one of the dimensions of that reproduction has been the facilitation of adaptation to oppressive circumstances. So all of these has created this sort of unique structure that transcends denominational lines and I think does allow us to speak meaningfully of the black church at descriptive level. Because there's certain characteristics that really ref that we all reflect that made up um, the Christian witness in the black community. That being said, then there's this ideal of the black church that many of us see as a liberative uh, institution within the black community that has traditionally been prophetic and and somehow now has fallen off i don't know that that is the case i think that is a confusion with the ideal almost mythical framework of what the black church has been with a normative construct of what we think the black church should be that is not to say that the black church has not functioned in liberative and ways to produce and facilitate health in the black community. But it does say that it does not quite fit historically the normative model that, that we like to impose upon it as this politically mobile institution that was fighting for an explicit program of political and economic liberation historically. There has been scattered efforts. There has been some combined efforts. There have been some very effective efforts here and there across the board. But this idea that the black church has always been this explicitly self-conscious prophetic institution, I'm not sure that that image uh, squares with the contours of what we descriptively call the uh, black church uh, completely. So that's, there's a little tension there. Well, Dr. Johnson, uh, I hear people say all the time, uh, our white brethren and others say all the time, there's no black church. That's a just it's just a church. What would you? How would you? How would you address that issue? Well, well, well first, first of all, I put little little stock in anything our Caucasian brothers say about the church or the black church, unless it's verified by some respected black scholar theologian. I don't think the history of uh, the bankrupt uh, institution of American Christianity gives them the appropriate spiritual and moral platform to speak meaningfully to us about what it means to be us and express our Christianity under the circumstances that we live under. For, I want to be clear about that first. Second, I, I, I want to say this, that that rhetorical strategy has been employed uh, primarily by white evangelicals who have consistently propagated a theology 
that allowed them to support white supremacy and to participate in the construction and maintenance of the institution of segregation, which is more about uh, white supremacy than it was about keeping the races apart because the races were obviously very much together when we were cleaning their houses and raising their children. So it was always about uh, establishing a, an order. So they hid that behind this sort of uh, non-racial theology that allowed the systemic reality of evil to go unchallenged. If there is no black and white, then there is no systemic oppression. Then there is just moral uh, individuals who are making moral and spiritual choices that impact uh, their situation in life, which allows them to comfortably blame the victim and support policies, uh, public and private, that reinforce black suffering. So I think this this I, this use of this sentimental togetherness without the appropriate social and theological analysis allows them to evade responsibility. And I think that's why they promote it. And if, if you don't mind, I'd like to make one other point about uh, something related to that. This is why we have this ongoing struggle right now in the black church that makes us so vulnerable to white evangelical theology and ideologies that uh, culturally and politically and economically cripple our people because we buy into some of the sentimental jargon promoted by uh, these conservative white evangelical churches, even in our more educated middle-class black churches, because our people tend to still use whiteness as a criteria of rightness and it, that it manifests itself in the church in our theological language. And, and this perpetuation of a sentiment, evangelical sentimentalism continues to cripple the prophetic witness of the black church and stymie our efforts to create a collective consciousness capable of sustaining the struggle in ways that would advance our people and our quality of life much more rapidly. And so I, I think that there's a, a complex of issues that are related to that kind of statement theologically that is actually operative in the amb ambiguous uh, discourse of the black church that we need to identify theologically target and eliminate where we can. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a sad state of affairs, but we're still taking our theological cues and language from white evangelicals and embedded in that and that kind of sentimentality is a theology that's very restrictive and is in fact very oppressive.